with the coming down of Shelby versus Holder and seeing that the Supreme Court has taken us in part back to pre-1965, what will you do using the power of your office to ensure that we don't further inch our way back to pre-1865? And what will you do to not only protect voting rights in this election, but also in enhance access to the, to the ballot for the elderly, communities of color, college students, people of, who are poor, and those involved in the criminal justice system? Thanks for that very important question. You know, as I mentioned earlier, as somebody who has run for office in Vermont many, many, many times, it amazes me that in the year 2016, people are working overtime trying to figure out ways to prevent people from voting. Prevent people from voting. All right, you have my word. This is an issue that I feel passionately about. I hate political cowards. You know, I don't hate, I don't hate people who disagree with me. That's democracy. My views are, you know, very progressive and I got conservative friends who disagree with me. I don't hate them. But I do hate cowards who try to get elected by denying people the right to vote. We are not going back. Too many people fought and died for the right to vote. You got, I mean, you all know the tricks. You know, voter fraud, voter, if you cheat and you vote twice, that's a serious penalty. Very serious crime, you should pay for it. But fortunately in America, it is not a serious problem. But using that excuse, all of these governors and cowardly legislatures have passed all kinds of legislation to make it harder for poor people to vote. In other words, you need a government uh, established ID. Well, what happens if you're too poor to own a car? You're too old to drive? You may not have, well, that's okay. You can pay $25 and go across town to get your ID. Well, maybe the office is not open when you go. Maybe you don't know how to get, can't afford to get across town. And it's not only poor people. It is old people, it is students, making it harder for young people to participate. Look, here's what I believe, and we gotta figure this out. I talked recently with, with Jesse Jackson about this issue. People look, we don't quite know the answer. It turns out, I didn't know this, federal government actually does not in the Constitution guarantee the right to vote. You all know that? It's a state decision, not a, not a constitutional decision. So what ultimately we have got to do, and some people think it's a constitutional amendment, some think we, people think we could do it legislatively. I'm not sure which is the best route. But you know what other countries do in terms of the right to vote? all over this world, they say automatically, with all of the technology out there, you are 18 years of age, you are registered to vote, that's it, automatically. What's the problem? If you don't pay your taxes, somehow the government can fine you. So I think if you're over 18, we can know who you are. You're automatically registered to vote. And I'll tell you something else. You know, we have got a crackdown. You know, you all remember those pictures in Florida, people waiting online for hours to cast their vote. What is that about? It's just simply an effort to discourage poor people from voting, okay? And I'll tell you something else. You want a radical idea regarding this? All right, here's a radical idea. We've introduced legislation uh, with John Conyers of Michigan some years ago. What about actually having Election Day a national holiday? Yeah. You know, if we pride ourselves in being democracy, why? How many people miss vote? They're out working. By the time they get off of work and they have to come back, they miss votes. So we need to do same day registration. We need to extend early voting. We need a national holiday to honor our democracy and let people think about who they're voting and take the time to come out 
to vote. It's not radical. But here's the issue, and all of you know this. And let me tell you what, you know, others won't publicly tell you. When we have low voter turnouts, like we did a year ago, November, do you know how many people voted? 63% of the American people did not vote. 80% of young people did not vote in November 2014. Yeah. And that was great news for the Republican Party and for the wealthiest people in this country, all right? Our job is to reverse that. Our job, as I said earlier, is to figure out what is the mechanisms that we need to increase voter participation. Let's think about it. I don't have all the answers. Our goal, though, is to have the highest rate of voter turnout in the world, not one of the lowest. That I can assure you.